In our previous videos, we have created an autocomplete text field that we populate with either online data or local data. Now we want to save the information that we're associating with this plant when we hit the save button. And for that we need to figure out which plant we selected from the autocomplete text. So in this video we're going to figure that out. What we need to do is we need to make an inner class that implements a couple of interfaces. Uh, on item click listener and on item selected listener and then we need to subscribe those two there are this object that we're going to make this class we're going to make we need to subscribe that to the autocomplete text so first of all I'm in the GPS of plant activity and this is the activity that we see here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make an inner class so notice that this close curly represents the closing boundary of the GPS of plant activity I'm within that boundary, but I'm not within another method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say class plant selected implements implements adapter view dot on item selected listener and then adapter view dot on item click listener and open curly and close curly. And now you see it red lines, so I can easily Alt-Enter and say Implement Methods. Okay, we'll go ahead and choose each of these. And now what this means, on-item click and on-item selected, those are the two important ones we want to pay attention to. Uh, what this means is these methods will be called when the user clicks an item from the autocomplete or when the uh, user selects an item another way. So in other words, you notice that as I type in Magnolia, a list of autocompletes comes up and I can click on one. And we want to know which one the user clicked on. Okay, so we get a very important piece of information here, which is this position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, uh, well, what's the name of my autocomplete? Let's remember what that is. It's ACT plant name. Okay. So because I'm within the boundary of the GPS of plant activity, I still have access to that ACT plant name within this inner class, and that's why I made it an inner class. So I'll say ACT plant name dot get adapter. Adapter represents the uh, array adapter that we used in our async task, which we created in a previous video. And that async task populates, here we go, plant adapter, it populates it with a list of plant DTOs that we have fetched either from an online or a local data source. So get adapter dot get item and position. Position represents the ordinal position within that list. Now uh, using an Android Studio shortcut control alt V I can assign this what we'll go with over here get item control alt V I can assign this to a new uh, variable and that variable is going to be a plant variable and we're going to make that a variable of type plant because that will give us some more uh, plant DTO rather because that will give us more methods that we can use okay and save it's not going to get let me get away with this until I cast because get adapter get item is going to return an object so we have to do a cast okay so now we've casted okay I'll put a little comment to this effect that says get the selected item okay and now what we can do is we can say plant dot get whoops uh, plant dot get cache ID and oh, not no we want get and plant dot get GUID those two are our unique identifiers the cache ID is the uh, unique identifier that's specific to this device. The GUID is the global unique identifier. Uh, and this is enough for us for the moment. So I will control alt F, which will convert this to a field. Uh, we'll say GPS a plant, and we're gonna call it cache ID, that's fine. And for GUID, uh, again, we'll control alt F, which makes a field. In other words, a field is something that's declared at the very top of the class and that is visible within all methods. So you see private long cache ID is the one that we've just created. And then we're going to say uh, plant 
oops, sorry, uh, Control Alt F on Get GUID, and uh, we'll put it in GPS a plan. Okay, and GUID is fine. Okay, now uh, we shouldn't really copy paste, but this is just a few lines. So I'm going to take these lines and I'm going to put them down in on item selected uh, because it's going to be the same logic there. What we ought to do is refactor this into one common method that both call, but uh, hey, that's good enough for me. Okay, now we need to take this inner class and we need to, well, first of all, I'm going to set a couple breakpoints so we can watch this in just a moment. I uh, won't forget that part. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to subscribe this, there we go. We need to subscribe this, this inner class to our autocomplete text view. For that, we're going to go up to the onCreate method, and we're going to see where this autocomplete text view is initialized. We see it's initialized up here. So what I'm going to do now is, what did we call our inner class? I think we called it uh, plant something or other. I already forgot. Plant selected. That's what I thought. So I'm going to create an instance of the plant selected listener. Okay, plant selected, PS equals new plant selected. Okay, and we will subscribe ACT plant name to this plant selected listener. Okay, ACT plant name dot set. Uh, one second. Set on click listener, PS, ACT plant name, set on item selected listener, and again, PS. Okay. And I'm sorry, that first one should be set on item click listener, not on click listener, PS. I noticed it was redlining. Okay, and save. Okay, with that now, I'm going to save. And it should mean that when we click an item in the selected, uh, in the uh, autocomplete text, it should fire this, and it should be able to remember our cache ID and our GUID. Uh, so I'm going to save, and I'm going to debug, and let's see how it works. Now our uh, emulator has loaded. I'll type Magnolia. We see we're starting to get results. I'll choose a different one this time. We'll choose... Um, Accumulate subcore data, and sure enough, you see it has already fired into my on item click. I'm going to choose F8, and that will give us our cache ID, our local ID, and also the uh, global unique identifier. Uh, so let's see if we can get this guy plant.getguid. I'll just click on plant and I'll expand. And let's make sure we also have the right one. So Magnolia Accumulate subcore data yellow cucumber tree. The GUID is 32. I'm going to go to plant places. I'll go ahead and choose F9 on this one. And we said it was 32, so I'm going to go to plant places. And the global unique identifier is the same identifier we use on this website. So I'll just put in Magnolia Accumulator. And there are several different magnolias with that Accumulata species. I believe it was subcore data. I click on subcore data and take a look at the top here. The unique identifier, the global unique identifier, uh, is up at the top. Sure enough, you see the number 32, and we have indeed selected the correct global unique identifier for this plant. So that gives us our next step, which we know which plant we have now. We can easily gather the location and description, the latitude and longitude. The next thing we need to do in our next video is activate the save button so that we can save the plant locally. Uh, and actually, I need to make a little difference here. I said plant, but really it's a specimen. Uh, so a plant is the scientific definition of what a plant is. It's genus, species, so on and so forth. A specimen is a specific GPS position that we can see. For example, this Colrotirio paniculata, a, a golden rain tree, uh, there's the scientific definition of what a Colrotirio paniculata is. But this one that is photographed and GPSed 
is a specific Coleropteria paniculata, and we will call that a specimen. Each one of these with a specific ID and a specific location is a specimen. And so that's what we're going to begin tracking in our next video. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.